earliest memory, as far back as I can recall, was being three years old on my spring horse, rocking back and forth, watching a black and white cartoon of Popeye. <laughs> Pretending my dad wasn't in the next room beating my mom. She fought back. She secretly sneaked out to the pasture each morning to practice a self-defense kata. And I remember being mesmerized by her movement, but unable to recall any of the sequences to defend myself. You see, research clearly shows that exposure to early childhood violence activates, if not creates itself, learning difficulties in children. And I remember the first time it happened to me, I was in class, writing right-handed like everyone was forced to, smacked on the back of the head and wrapped on the knuckles because my name, my name came out backwards, legible only in a mirror. That's me, Tax Nonos. <laughs> Scott Sonnen for you non-dyslexics. The name actually stuck through most of my life and was later immortalized as a literary figure in a Star Wars novel. But despite my later Jedi-hood, the violence to which I was exposed slowly pulled me to the dark side of the Force into learning disabilities. You see, I experienced my dyslexia as a process of elimination, whereas like most of you, under normal circumstances, I only see six different combinations of the word cat but under threat of violence, humiliation, or shame, I can see up to 40. And if they twist and turn on the page like they often do, an infinite array from which I must eliminate all but the correct one. That's why to you when I speak, and to my teachers back then, I appeared to read and write 400 to 2,000 times slower than the verbal learners. Despite being a naturally goofy kid with a face only a mother can love, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be difficult, but my actions were misperceived as deliberately disruptive. And I remember this report card. The teacher grabbed me by the wrist and he ripped me to the front of the class. He bent me over the desk producing a waffle paddle. I blurted out the answer to a math problem before he had given the formula to solve it. I didn't know why I knew the right answer. It just felt right. He began to beat me with the paddle, screaming that I was either cheating or lying, and on the last stroke missed. He snapped the paddle in two across my lower back, producing numbness down my legs and laughter from the class. In his embarrassment, he grabbed me by the hair and he dragged me down into the principal's office, throwing me into the chair because... He said I could have been one of the top three students in the class if he could only teach me the difference between right and wrong. I wasn't invited back to teach the next year, thank God. My mother had arrived to rescue me. She kicked open the principal's office. And she said, there's nothing wrong with my kid. There's something wrong with your teachers. And if they're not going to do their job, I'm going to goddamn do it for you. She did. She got me involved into alternative education beginning with chisenbop, a form of Korean finger counting and a Bacchus light wrapping on the desk that allowed me to recount how I had arrived at math solutions. She put me into total physical response, which was a way to bind language to movement so that dyslexics can access it. Step back, sit down, move to the right. See, I can do it. And she provided me with an endless array of art journals. And although my handwriting has never improved, my journals always show tremendous imagination. My mom set me on the path to identifying my learning style, but I had not found it yet. And because of my di difficulties in class being perceived as intentionally disruptive, my teachers eventually gave up hope. I was institutionalized in a psychiatric hospital 
for my disruptive behavior. I was incarcerated for not fitting the mold of how one ought to learn. And in the hospital, I learned the extremely brutal consequences of expressing my outrage for this injustice. So don't mistake my poise for indifference. It impacts me. It's taken decades to displace my rage with forgiveness because this message is important. In the hospital, I learned to speak the way that they wanted me to speak. I learned to move the way they thought was proper. I even learned to answer questions in a way that convinced them that I was thinking the way they thought I should. And that got me released. And back in the mainstream population, the administration under strict legal confidentiality to not divulge my whereabouts, spoke with teachers overheard by teachers, overheard by students. Within weeks, it was like wildfire. I was dehumanized as the crazy kid who had been released from the insane asylum. The violence from the teachers leapt to the students, singled out by my peers, starting day one. Standing at the homeroom, waiting for the bell to ring, waiting desperately for that bell to ring. Senior came by and he smacked the glasses off my face and I remember pushing him away saying, leave me alone. I only felt my head snap back twice. It happens so fast that you don't really feel the pain. And then he grabbed a hold of me. And the world slowed down. And the next fist traveled in as if it was moving through molasses. And I was really curious about it as I moved in the way. And I watched it impact the wall behind me. <laughs> I was really excited about that. <laughs> I wasn't able to use it to defend myself, but I learned in the subsequent attacks that if I ran, they caught me. If I fought back, they continued. If I showed them that they couldn't hurt me, they could continue until they put me in an ambulance. But I learned how to roll with the punch. When I saw it coming in, I could fold around that strike when it did come, and I could convince them that it hurt a lot more than it actually did, and I can lessen the damage. It was ironic that I had found within the very thing that activated my learning, my learning difficulties, my own learning style. And I spent the rest of my la life trying to unpack those two and extract them from each other. I recalled my mom sneaking out into the pasture each morning to practice a self-defense cot, and I thought, with all of her forms of alternative education, maybe well, this was always the thing. It's always been martial art. So I set out to find my first martial art class, fully expecting that I would be a star pupil. <laughs> Excuse the ego. You see, neuroscientists describe this as tachypsychia. It's a distortion of time. When you find your learning style, things happen slowly because the experience is so packed with data, you have more frames per second of awareness, more slices of time in your experience. So I fully expected to walk into class with my superpower of time warp and be black belt. <laughs> they'd grab a hold of me and they'd throw me down and I'd pop up and I'd have no idea what they did. Because I couldn't follow their instructions, I couldn't understand their demonstrations, I couldn't remember any sequence. But then on the weekends, they had this thing they called sparring and my spine would just come alive. They'd grab a hold of me, they'd throw me down, I'd pop back up and i have a 3D hologram of what they had just done. So they'd grab a hold of me and they'd throw me down on the ground, I'd pop up and I clearly understood what they had just pulled off. The next time they grabbed a hold of me, they'd go to throw me down and I'd step out of the way seeing it coming in. To everybody else, it just looked like I was having a snot kicked out of me. Like I was losing a lot but it was learning so much from it, absorbing it like a sponge. And I started to lose less. State championships led to regionals, regionals to nationals, nationals to worlds, worlds to five gold medals for the US team. 
And I say that not to aggrandize any accomplishments, but to celebrate the fact that when you find your learning style, extraordinary things will happen. I remember the first time I became fully cognizant of being a kinesthetic learner. I was in Russia, I was training with one of their special operation units, and the instructor was having such an awful time with me. <laughs> he said, Scott, no, you must grab wrist, rotate, drop down. I couldn't understand him any better than if English was his first language. <laughs> the general walks by and he understands, he understands. He walks over to the instructor, he holds up his finger, grabs a hold of my wrist and he throws me down like water over rocks and I came up flooded. You shall rush, Pajosta, do that again, please. He grabbed a hold of me, threw me down, I came up. At his level of mastery, the experience was so densely packed with data that I was flooded. It was exhilarating. He showed her ass, Pajosta. He threw me down at Papa Cup. He threw me down at Papa Cup. He threw me down at Papa Cup. In swarms this mass of Russians around the general's demonstration, shaking their head at the crazy American. The general holds up his hand and he says, Look at our American. Up, down, up, down. Wherever he go, wood gets softer. <laughs> Now, the Russians, they did have an expression for this. They called it a sixth sense. Not the, I can see dead people, kind of sixth sense. <laughs> the, their neuroscientists labeled it as mechanoreception, a combination of three different types of physical awareness. The traditional that we know, kinesthesia, the transition and trajectory across space. But there's also position sense that some of us know. The alignment of bones without visual corroboration. So if I grab a hold of the shoulder, I can feel where the opposite foot lies. And then there's forced tension sense of knowing exactly how much pressure is being placed against the body so that you can move away from the direction of its intention. And the combination of these three were like a superstorm for me, clearer than hearing and more vivid than vision. So when I went back to the States, I did as much research as I could into this multiple style learning theory. And I discovered not several, but 71 different learning styles one of which is verbal linguistic. 70 learning styles are nonverbal. 70 learning styles are dyslexic by definition, dis meaning difficult, lexic meaning language. 70 learning styles have been pathologized as learning difficulties. Now imagine all the people throughout history, such as John Lennon, who chose the genius of their nonverbal learning style over the labels of being called a dyslexic. From both Edison and Tesla in electricity. From both Wright brothers to Richard Branson in the power of flight. From Alexander Graham Bell to Stephen Jobs in communication. From Sir Isaac Newton to Stephen Hawking in physics. From Da Vinci to Disney in art and Washington to Kennedy in politics. You may know someone who's having difficulty identifying their learning style, or worse, having violence disable their learning. It only takes one person, one word, to change their world, to convince them that they don't have difficulty learning. They just learn differently. My mom taught me that. I am here by choice because I choose the genius of my learning style over the labels of being called a retard, crazy, and stupid. Einstein, my favorite dyslexic, said that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you're forever going to feel frustrated. And that fish is always going to feel stupid. The truth is, the truth is why it was so difficult for me to give this talk. The irony for 70 different nonverbal learning styles is that we may have difficulty climbing trees, but we're innately, perfectly masterful swimmers. Just put us back in the water. <laughs> <laughs>